thanks for checking out the video. At the moment in the UK, there's a bit of a, a weather warning. Uh, it's a heat wave at the moment, and it's a red alert weather warning for large parts of England. Temperatures might even top 40 degrees centigrade, is what they're saying. Um, but down here, closer to the coast, you know, I'm hoping it's going to be somewhat less than that. It's the beginning of a working week and, um, you know, everyone's got to trudge off to work in this heat. Um, and I'm lucky enough to not have to do that. And uh, I'm kind of heading to the beach today. It's nice and local, so I haven't traveled, you know, 15 minutes up the road. Um, and I'm gonna keep the hike down to the absolute minimum, obviously with the heat. You know, I'm hoping that uh, sort of three miles thereabouts might get me to the, to the spot on the beach where, you know, I've got half a chance of uh, spending the day and hopefully the night. I'm having uh, you can probably hear already uh, it's just, uh, the wind noise you know I only f uh, film on my phone and the microphone is sort of quite primitive you can't cope with a lot of wind and uh, we've got a gentle southeasterly today but as I'm getting closer to the beach that's being massively enhanced by a, a, a strong uh, sea breeze that's picking up you know due to the hot weather and the high pressure that's uh, to be expected at this time of year um, so the two combined winds will probably make for a very noisy filming, you know, when I do get to the beach. So that's going to be a bit of a struggle. So there'll probably be a, an awful lot of visual and hardly any sort of talking, really. Apart from the wind, uh, which is uh, probably wreaking havoc with the audio on this, um, the trouble with the, a beach on the south coast, especially on one of the hottest days, if not the hottest day of the year, is that uh, you can't get away from the crowds, you know. So I've headed to, as I say, local beach to myself, um, but one that uh, I know is not backed by much in the way of buildings, because there's a nature reserve uh, behind the beach. The beach itself is rather desolate in a way, you know, it's like a lot of the beaches here, it's it's shingle and pebbles, but uh, this is vast amounts, uh, you know, a large spit of shingles and, and pebbles, um, which goes on for some distance. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, it'll be secluded um, the further along the spit you go, um, and hopefully gets, you know, a bit of time and space. Great spot for a wild camp. If you could just get the tides right. We're coming closer to the beach now. This last push to the beach would be rather warm, I think, but you know, already I can feel the sea breeze, cooling breeze off the sea, and uh, yeah, it's quite bearable actually, it's fine. a few bits of driftwood now because I know from uh, experience that our beaches don't seem to collect a lot of the 
driftwood and uh, I might need a couple of sticks to create some kind of shelter. So uh, yeah, I'll get them when, when I spot them. Sea kale uh, is a wild edible, but um, although locally abundant here, uh, nationally it's quite rare apparently, and internationally too. These, uh, the driftwood on these beaches, I've noticed over the years, is very hit and miss. You know, you don't often get a lot. So these little pieces here now, I'm going to start trying to collect those uh, as I head along the uh, along the shingle spit now, <laughs> rather than miss out on any, um, because um, I need a few little bits as, uh, to light the twig stove to make tea and stuff. careful um, where I wander about and where I film especially. It seems to be that uh, sort of this this end, the more sort of secluded end of this long shingle spit here, seems to be uh, taken over as the headquarters of the local naturist club. So um, yeah, as you can imagine, um, I think I'm beginning to stick out like a sore thumb so I'm just going to keep as low a profile as possible. extra water bottle today because of all the heat wave warnings on the, on the media. And of course I always carry a litre of water in the pack as well. The pack came in at uh, nine kilograms today which you know is I'm quite pleased with really. Anything round about ten is good for me anyway. Makes this reasonably comfortable to you know hack about in all day even though today was a pretty short hike to be honest. Includes the food, includes the water, around about nine kilograms. Um, one less woolly jumper because because of the heat, obviously. And tonight's going to be an exceptionally warm night, apparently. So, as I say, I binned off one of the jumpers. I have put in a pair of ca uh, cotton canvas shorts, so in case I'm feeling brave enough to dip my toes in the sea.
so far the sea breeze hasn't been too bad really. It's a bit tricky lighting a fire. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be a bit worse than this, so hopefully the audio isn't too muffled up by the wind. And hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. I'm right at the end of the spit here, pretty much where it ends at uh, Harbour Mouth there, Harbour Mouth into the nature reserve. So I'm hoping that this end of the spit is going to be, well, the quietest part. There's still a few people on the beach wandering about, the naturists and things. Um, so yeah, still uh, a little bit busier than I hoped, but you know, it's a nice day. You can't uh, knock anyone for coming down to the beach. And other people probably want to find their secluded areas as well. So, you know, sometimes we're all hunting the same kind of thing, I suppose. has gotten a little bit quieter. Fluid levels up. Yeah, it's pretty much high tide now, and we're coming off springs, so this is as high as it gets today. In the early hours of tomorrow morning, around about half past four, it won't make it quite as high, depending on weather conditions, but they're going to be pretty settled in a high pressure at the moment. But in the early hours of tomorrow morning, it won't be quite as high, so to camp from this point up the beach is going to be dry, you know, it's not going to, you're not going to get caught out by the time.
dinner tonight is uh, fried vegetables on rice and um, the rice is mixed in with some dried vegetables as I usually do. So I put the dried vegetables and the rice all together so as the rice cooks the dehydrated vegetables will rehydrate. So I've got some um, mushrooms in there and um, some these are dehydrated French beans actually. Uh, a few days ago there was a my wife's French beans in the garden. We had a glut of French beans so I uh, dehydrated them. You know, anything green should really be blanched before you try and dehydrate it. But, um, you know, a few minutes in boiling water and then cool it down with some cold water to so stop the cooking process. And then very easy in a simple dehydrator to dehydrate them. Things like mushrooms um, don't need blanching and also they don't need drying out to sort of dry brittle. They can be dried to a, a slightly flexible consistency whereas green things like these French beans uh, are dried down till they're pretty much brittle. You know, you'd call it almost bone dry I suppose. And you cover them with water and the idea being that um, the rice cooks and the dehydrated vegetables absorb the water. If we get the right amount of water in there, none will be wasted. It will all be absorbed by the rice and vegetables. A bit of soy sauce. rice and the rehydrated veg back in the pan just for 30 seconds
ability to drive in any tent stakes or anything like that. I've got to try and make some anchor points for the shelter that I want to put up tonight. So I'm hoping that uh, something like this might do the trick, you know, burying a rock in the ground. been a beautiful beach day and uh, still incredibly warm and tonight is actually predicted to be a very mild night so I think I brought my woolen onesie type thing um, that I normally sleep in which is a kind of a base layer but um, I use it like a like a onesie almost like a boiler suit um, but I don't think I'm going to use it tonight I think I'm just gonna rely on these trousers and uh, maybe a uh, base layer and a merino wool jumper and uh, yeah maybe a hat on and uh, hope for the best
just picked up somewhat during the night and just that alone enough was to sort of cool me right down and um, to the point where I put on the one in one um, woolen uh, base layer thing because uh, I needed the warmth and then in the early hours I think about one o'clock half past one I just dropped the um, the other side the roof of the shelter down on top of me um, also to provide some protection from the wind because the wind was sort of cutting through me off the sea my sleep much but uh, yeah I just needed some protection from it really heavy enough to just stay on top of me and that uh, kept the wind off me and uh, yeah made for a much more comfortable night.